Hey everybody, it's Aug here back with another video and today we're going to look at the SMCath 3 pool strategy. So I just recently released a 2 pool strategy in which we clear the entire instance including the boss in 2 pools total. Very quick, fastest as possible for leveling from 21 to 42, but sometimes you just can't get down to the 2 pool strategy, it takes a while to get used to. And so we have a 3 pool strategy that we can also do that's still very good, very quick XP. As you see, you're not really losing much time at all on the resets once you get it down. So I'm going to show this 3 pool strategy, walk through just like I did with the 2 pool strategy what we're doing. So we're going to open up the same kind of way, make sure you have full buffs, full mana, all that good stuff. We're going to pool the same as before, rank 1 arcane explosionings to pool pretty much everything. So occasionally a counter spell or a rank one fire blast to pull. The jump's going to be the same idea. You're going to be jumping and weaving in and out of these little um, areas and hallways here so that you can make sure that you're not getting extra frost bolts or upstairs a potential slow. You're going to cross over at the top of the very first area and just cross over nice and smoothly. You don't need to worry too much about this first pull. You blink right there, but it's very, very light as far as damage goes. I get frost bolted right here, which is oddly enough, same as before, but you just jump over the side. You're not gonna take much damage. Just make sure that you have mana shield and ice barrier up. Same thing as before, we're going to slow, uh, frost some of those guys. Key difference that you'll see is that we didn't use block. Reason being, if we use block for each of these pools, the total pool, or the total time it's gonna take to run the instance is like 20 minutes. 100% not worth it. So, we're only going to use block on the final boss. Every single other pool, which next pool I don't do a very clean job with it, but it's a kill nonetheless, you do without block. Reason being, then you're ready to go right into the boss room and you hopefully don't lose any time. This entire video is going to be about nine minutes long, including the boss kill. So once you get it down, you're really not losing any efficiency if you do the three pool versus the two pool strategy. Two pool just looks a lot cooler. So same thing as before, easy to get these mobs down, grind them down real quick. Finish off the other mobs, AOE them down. Big difference here, as soon as you're done, go on to the next group. There's no waiting around and just taking your time. You don't need to because all you're waiting for is your mana to be back up. You didn't, you didn't use block and you're not ready for anything else. So I'm gonna skip through the looting and we're drinking up, getting ready to go again. So now this is gonna be the same kind of idea, difference being that you're not gonna come down the steps. When you're first starting this out, I highly, highly recommend to use two blocks in the end. Reason being, this pool right here is actually be pretty tough because you could get slowed. You're not going to be regening as much mana as you would with the two pool strategy just because there's not as many frost bolts coming at you. And you're going to be taking some damage. So when you're first getting this down, I recommend aggroing up all the mobs just as we are here, jumping in and out, uh, fire blasting that one, conical, or sorry, counterspelling that one, frost noving here, same exact way as the two pool. But I recommend running down the stairs just like we would with the two pool strategy and at the bottom of the stairs blocking reason being you want these mobs do not one not kill you and two i'm gonna pause the video right there real quick one not kill you and two you want them to be grouped up now what i do if you don't go down is you need some kind of way to group up all the mobs together while at the same time not letting them kill you so what i do is i wait here right at the corner i have some mobs coming from over here some mobs coming from over here, and I have this one mob that's going to be waiting right here. They're all kind of converging on this one corner spot right here. So if I jump, it's not going to take too long for these mobs to walk their way down and get over. These mobs will be on me immediately, but hopefully they won't kill me, right? That's the idea. So I wait here for a little bit, watch, wait for the mobs to get closer, jump down right here. Now all the mobs are running over here. Refresh the buffs. We'll see that they'll all kind of group up. I pot right there, and I Nova. So now 32% mana, or sorry, 52% mana. So we're doing all right. We start our uh, AOE combo. I believe, if I remember correctly, one of these mobs breaks out oddly. He had a Centurion. He gets close, so it gets a little bit sloppy. But it's the same kind of idea as before, guys. You can take hits from one, as long as it's not a defender. If it's a defender, he's gonna interrupt you. I play it safe here, and I go for the extra Blizzard instead of going for the Flame Strike Kona Cold combo. But if you want to do that, you can do that as well. But we're going to round up these mobs, going to get them down, and then we'll be ready for the last boss. Notice again that we did not use block, so we still have block, we still have our limited invulnerability potion, and we're ready to go with everything. 
One thing you will notice that is different is that my mana is very low. Typically, when we finish the two-pool strategy with the very first pool, our mana is up at around 80, 90%, just because we're regening the whole time. Right now, it's at 3%. I have no pots, no anything, so I'm really hoping for a clear casting proc right here. Fortunately, I get a clear casting proc, and I'm able to get the Cone of Cold. If not, I would probably have to Nova again, run away, wait for a regen, try to get clear casting procs, do whatever. The important thing is to get them down. Get down the mobs, get ready for the final boss, don't waste block. First few times when you're going through it, when you're trying to get it down, feel free to use block though and just wait the five minutes now. So that's all you would do. You'd go block down the stairs after this pool, um, and then you just wait. You just wait five minutes for block to be back up. End of the day, it's not going to slow down your average pools per hour. This is done in nine minutes, so if you're waiting an extra five minutes or so, you're really only talking about 14 minutes a run, and so you're still doing close to five runs an hour. Still amazing XP. But once we finish up these mobs right here, we'll go up to the top, we'll show the blink strategy, and we'll go back over how to kill the boss again. All right, so we're just going to skip a little bit ahead. A little bit further. All right, bringing up the mana ruby. I'm going to show you guys the specific strat that we use to get by all the mobs, just to help you guys out. Notice that I was a little bit sloppy in picking up the mobs, and we have one left, so I'm just going to kill it real quick. Uh, it is a defender, so can't stay close to it, so I'm going to be cutting it a little bit, just so I don't get interrupted. But we take this down, and then we'll be going into the final boss room. Similar to before, you could get about 25 gold an hour, just from pure raw gold if you're looting everything, um, and mats. And you can get up to about 100 gold an hour if you're selling these runs to other people. So very lucrative, very easy to get through here. Um... Not a problem when you're three-pooling it. It takes off a lot of the stress. The second pool is a little tough, so that's just where you can use that block. But overall, it's pretty easy. The way we're going to get around this, and the way you always want to get around these mobs, is you want to leverage your blink to blink through mobs on either side. I like the right side, personally, and that's just what I'm most familiar with. So I'm going to go around the right side. I'm going to look to see if there's any mobs that are padding right to the right. There's not, so I'm going to keep on walking. I see a couple mobs kind of coalescing in the middle. So what I want to do is I want to blink before through these mobs, run into the wall, wait for this wizard to walk around the side, and then I'm just going to run up on top. Basically, that's, idea, that's the same idea that you'll use every single time. You just want to make sure that you have a nice five-yard gap. Now, because we did the two pulls without the block, we're ready to go immediately. We pull, we zigzag, making sure that we aggro both of those two side groups. We block just like always, and then we're going to go into that same exact rotation as before. You see the wizard that is slowly tailing behind. He'll get there. Not that big of a deal. Just make sure you don't take the extra hits. See here that we get down to 78%, which is perfect. Plenty of damage. We get the Kona Cold. We get the uh, Extra Nova, the Limited Invulnerability Potion, the three Arcane Explosions, Iron Grenade, rebuff our shields, and then finish off the rest of the mobs without a problem. And there it is. So I'm just going to go over that kill order again, just as before, just so people know what's going on. So we're going to come out of block, and the very first thing that we're going to do is we're going to Nova. Take another couple steps away. Make sure you're like staggering those steps just so that you're um, taking advantage of their leeway and so that you're not getting extra hits on you. You're going to reapply your ice barrier. And then as a troll, I'm going to pop troll berserking. And we're going to flame strike Kona Cold these mobs. As soon as we finish the Kona Cold, we're going to cold snap, take one step away, frost Nova to re Nova all those guys. Then we're going to kind of gather ourselves, get ready for. The intense part, which is Cone of Cold, Limited Invulnerability Potion, which gives us six seconds of not being able to be hit by physical damage. We're still going to take some magic damage, though, so that's why we need to have above about 50% health going into this phase. And then go and do three Arcane Explosions, Iron Grenade, reapply our buffs, and then finish off the rest of the mobs, taking advantage of our Mana Gem as necessary. So to watch in real time, we got Flame Strike, Cone of Cold, as soon as the Kona Cold goes off, step away, Cold Snap, Kona Cold, uh, Frost Nova, Kona Cold, three Arcane Explosions with the Limited and Vulnerability Potion on, Iron Grenade, you'll see we're at 41% health, so we did take some damage, but not a ton. Arcane Explosion or Kona Cold to wrap them all up, and then all the mobs die. <clears throat> the important thing is to make sure you keep your mana and mana shield up for the boss. You'll see that he can break through it, so that's why we have the mana gem ready to go and ready to be used to kill him down. You kill the last couple stragglers, not a big deal. Uh, I do run out of mana here, so I have to get a little tricky with it. 
See, I'm literally at zero percent. I'm like, oh crap, what's gonna happen? But I get off the evocate, I get a couple ticks. We're good to go. Get down these mobs. It doesn't matter. The final boss isn't really gonna be able to hit you much. Um, so you don't need to worry about taking too much damage, but you do want to get a little bit of health up. You'll see there I was at about 10%, so I wanted to heal a little bit. She actually bugs over here on the side just because Morgrain died over there. That's another strat you could use. You can pull him over to the side. That way she's not going to hit you. Loot up and reset. I'm just going to aggro her anyways. Just because, hey, why not? Um, so now you finish the instance. You ran through. Everybody got the XP. You loot, and you go ahead, and you reset. I aggroed so that they could themselves loot, but you don't need to. So that's the end of the video, guys. It's a quick, easy three pool. You did the first bottom room without, uh, hopefully, without block. Second room without block, or when you're getting used to it, maybe use block there. Then you do the third room, same exact strategy as before. Just make sure you do it in that exact rotation. You will need engineering for it, and you will need limited vulnerability potions and iron grenades. But outside of that, there's not really much else to put into it. Hope you guys can get this down, and hope it helps you guys figure out the best strat for you to use. And I will see you guys in the next video. If you did enjoy this, please subscribe below, follow the Discord and the Twitch in the description below, and I will see you guys soon. Thanks, everyone.